Driving in central London is never fun. The congested traffic makes progress slow and tempers can run high. But drive those same roads at night and the pressure's slightly off. The city comes alive to a new kind of rhythm and to take advantage of it, you need the right kind of car. And for tonight, I've picked something that I think is just right for the occasion. What's your earliest memory of being in a car? For me, it's driving at night in the back of my dad's car. I would have been too small to look out of the window directly, but looking up, I'd be able to see the sodium streetlight streaming by, gasting everything in an orange hue, maybe the old building here and there. And I was separated from the driving itself. I would have had no concept of what that would have been. And all I would have known was that the soft engine roar, the road noise, the lights swishing by together would form a rhythm that would lull me off to sleep. And when manufacturers get it just right, they can help you recapture that feeling, that feeling of comfort and security, give you an ease of driving that's a facsimile of that safety and security that I felt as a child there on the back seat. This is the Audi A8 and it goes an awfully long way of getting very near that feeling. Audi's new A8 really does do a great job in creating a nice space to be in while you're driving. It's got plenty of torque to move its considerable weight around, but the best thing the A8 can do is make moving you around feel effortless. It's the chassis and the suspension where the car really shines. A new optional trick suspension can raise and lower individual wheels to make bumps in the road simply disappear by looking ahead and predicting what the car needs to do as not to disturb you from your relaxed drive. Everything about this car is aimed at making the driver's seat as relaxing as possible and although it works at any time of day, where it really shines is at night. There's something about driving at night that already takes me back to those memories of being a child, being in the back of the car, and that nighttime feeling of the bright lights contrasted against the dark background is echoed in this interior lighting, not just the, the bright infotainment screen and the virtual cockpit up front, but these light accents that run all the way around the cabin. Everything that's great about this car is here day and night, but something about driving it when it's dark outside just elevates it that little bit. As much as this car does remind me of those early experiences of being driven around, cars have come on considerably in the last 30 years, and nowhere is that more noticeable than in the infotainment system, which comes laden with every bell and whistle you could possibly desire. Audi is sometimes a little bit behind, a little bit ahead, depending on what year you buy your car, but right now Audi is absolutely leading its class with this new infotainment setup. We have these great two touchscreens here which are bright and vivid with crisp graphics that give you easy access to the variety of features you have, everything from setting the radio station to adjusting your seat. It has this wonderful haptic feedback, so when you press things, you feel a vibration come back through the screen to let you know you've actually pressed the button. It's real while being virtual at the same time. That married with the virtual cockpit, the instrument cluster which you can adapt to however you want to see your instruments, and it becomes a technological haven that you can configure to your own desire and make use of all these wonderful gadgets however you want. And some of those features still feel like witchcraft to me. The camera setting that looks like you're being filmed from outside the car may have cropped up on a few cars already, but it still really weirds me out. The cameras will even work up to 20 miles an hour, so when you pull away, you can make it look like you're playing GTA. The car has been fitted with some serious acoustic dampening, and although it's not the world's most loud engine to start with, the extra thick glass in the side here, as well as everything else that's been put in the car to deaden sound, really separates you from the world around you. We're in one of the busiest cities on the planet, and yet I'm able to create this quiet, calm, serene space just for me. Add to that comfortable seats, air conditioning that does its job, heated seats. I can make this more comfortable than my front room. That launch, there is a long wheelbase version of the A8 available as well, the A8L. And I was lucky enough to have a drive in that recently. I was picked up 
as a passenger from the airport and driven home in it. And sitting in the back of that car getting driven home, if I'd been a couple of feet smaller, I could have felt exactly like I did when I first rode in the back of my dad's car. Now, anytime a car can awaken in you a memory of a time gone by, a happier time, something from your childhood that puts a smile on your face, then that's as valid an experience as you could ever get from a car. It can be a, as thrilling as being pinned back in your seat under heavy acceleration or cornering at high speed or breaking your lap record. That's another great part of loving cars, the ability to tap into memories past. And it's not that this car can't give that performance thrill as well. This might be the entry level petrol engine, but it can still go. So as much as I could put my foot down and disappear off into the horizon, right now the smile on my face is brought on by a different part of the brain. That part that's responsible for memory. Now this car is infinitely nicer than anything my dad would have driven back in the 80s. But you know, we see things through rose tinted spectacles when we look back and as far as I was concerned, maybe back in 1984, dad's car was this nice. Tell you what though, I wouldn't swap it for this thing right now. <laughs>